So in our last video on multi threading, there we have discussed in detail that how two or multiple threads can communicate within each other. And with the help of the simple technique that is wait and notify how we can communicate between multiple threads within our application. And in this video, with that concept in mind, we will be solving one of the important questions for technical interview and that is printing out odd and even number with the help of the multi-threaded application. Hi, my name is Anindo and welcome back to my channel. In our last video tutorial, over there we have discussed in detail that what is multi-threading and what are the different way of creating a multi-threaded application in Java. So if you are not familiar with that concept and if you are not also familiar that how two or multiple threads can communicate with each other, I would highly recommend you to go through my previous video because there I have explained in detail all the concepts that you need to know for clearing any interview on the concept of multi-threaded application. So without wasting much time, let's start with this video and let's see how we can print out the odd and even number using the multi-threaded application. So before going to the solution of the problem, let's first understand the problem. So let's assume we have a printer somewhere over here and the job of this printer is to print a number. So for example, there is a counter called as count that starts from 1 and there is a function called as print. And the job of this printer is nothing but printing the value of the counter over here. Now the problem statement tells that let's assume we have two threads. Number 1 is thread 1 and number 2 is thread 2. And over here we have to print all the numbers from 1 to n but in a particular fashion which means that thread 1 should print out all the numbers that are odd in nature. Similarly thread 2 should print out all the numbers that are even in nature and all the numbers should be printed out in a sequential manner. For example, thread 1 will print 1 followed by thread 2 with 2. Similarly, again thread 1 will print 3 and so on. So at the end of the program, our output should look somewhat like this. So here you can see the number printed by the printer is 1 which is invoked by the odd thread and that is thread 1. Similarly, the thread 2 which is our even thread had printed 2 and thereafter again thread 1 printed 3 and so on. So in this way, in a sequential order, we have to print out all the numbers from 1 to n and in a correct format. So this is basically our problem statement which we need to solve using the multi-thread application. And believe me, this is quite a common and popular question for interview if you are going for a technical interview round. So without wasting much time, let's start solving this problem and let's see how with the simple solution we can solve multiple problems on the same type of question. So without wasting much time, let's start with solving this problem. But before that, if you are new to my channel, do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you're always ready for your next interview. So let's start with this solution. So before jumping into the actual solution of this problem, let's divide this problem into few sub problems so that it will be easy for us to solve the question during the interview. And the way we will be solving this problem is we will be subdividing the problem into two parts. And in the first part of this program, we will be simply printing out the numbers with the help of the thread. So our first part will look something like this. And once we are done with this solution, we will enhance our solution. And over there, what we will do with the help of some logic of multi-threading, there we will try to print out the odd number by the odd thread and even number by the even thread. So let's write the second sub-problem of this one. So these are basically the two sub-problems of our parent problem and if you are successful in solving these two sub-problems, we will by default solve the actual problem given to us. So without wasting much time, let's solve the first problem and that is printing out the number in a sequential way with the multi-thread application. So let's start with the implementation. So the first thing that I will be doing is I will be creating a class called as printing odd and even number. And within this class, let's create a simple class called as the printer whose main responsibility will be printing out numbers. So let's create the class called as printer. And as discussed, within this printer class, we will be also creating a method called as printer method, which will be printing out a number called as counter. So let's first define a counter variable over here and let's also define a printer method within this printer class.
Now let's make it multi-threaded and to make it multi-threaded you already know I have told you in my first video that we have to implement one class and that is the runnable class. So let's implement a runnable class and once we implement the runnable class we also have to override one method and that is the run method. So let's do it within this printer class. So we are done with the basic setup. Now let's create the two threads which will be actually printing out the numbers for us. So let's create the two threads within our main block. So here I will create the first thread that is thread 1 which I will be naming as event thread. And number 2 is the second thread that is the auth thread. Now if you have remembered from our earlier video, I have told you that whenever you are creating a thread, we also have to pass a runnable object within this thread method. So over here within this thread method, we have to pass a runnable object which is nothing but the printer class who is actually implementing this runnable method. So let's define the two object of the runnable class and that is the object of the printer class. And let's pass this object within this thread class. So I hope until now this is clear and if it is not clear, I would recommend you to check my previous video so that you will be clear with the concept that why I am actually doing this process to create a multi-thread application. So if you are clear, let me proceed further and let's start this two thread over here. So here you can see I have created two threads, thread 1 and thread 2 which is named as the event thread and the auth thread and here I have started the two threads over here. And now what we have to do from this run method, we only have to call this printer method that we have defined within this printer class. So that whenever the thread calls this run method, it will internally call the print method that we have defined within the printer class. And since this will be a continuous process, let's keep it within the while loop. And that's it, we are done with some basic setup of printing the numbers using the multiple threads. And one more thing I will be doing is over here, I will be increasing the value of the counter. So let's run this program and let's first analyze the output. And after that, we will upgrade this solution so that we can reach the ultimate code. So let's run this program over here. So let me stop this program because this will go in an infinite loop. So here you can see the numbers is getting printed in the console one at a time. So here we have solved one problem statement and that is our first problem statement that is printing out the number in sequence with the help of the multi-thread application. Now to make it simple to understand what I will be doing, I will not keep it within a while loop. Rather I will be printing out 10 numbers by each thread. So what I will be doing, I will be creating a for loop over here. So let's replace the while loop with a for loop. So I hope you are clear with this concept. Let's run it one more time. So great, here you can see our numbers are getting printed from 1 to 10. But if you analyze this output carefully, you will get to know one thing. And that is here, both the threads are printing from 1 to 10 rather than printing sequentially by which we want it. So here you can see both the thread 1 and thread 2 are printing 1 together. So to make it clear, let me also print the name of the threads in the console so that it will be very easy for you to understand the output pattern. So let's print it one more time. So here you can see the thread 0 which is our event thread have printed 1. Similarly the thread 1 which is our odd thread have also printed 1 in the output. So both the threads are actually printing this counter value together. But actually we do not want this type of output. What we want is each thread should print the value of, of the counter only one, means thread 1 should print only one followed by thread 2 and to make this thing sequential, what we have to do, instead of making this counter as a member variable, we will make it a static variable. So let's run it one more time and create. Now you can see, this is what the output we want. Here you can see thread 0 have printed 1, thread 0 again have printed 2, Similarly, thread 1 have printed 11, but both the thread have not printed the same number twice. And thus with the help of giving a static keyword with the counter variable, we have successfully implemented our first problem statement and that is printing out all the number in a sequential manner. So I hope until this point, this logic is clear to you. Now let's start with enhancing this solution. For that, what we will be doing, we will be solving 
the next problem statement and that is the odd thread will print out odd number and the even thread will print out even number. So to solve that problem, let's make this problem a little simple to understand and for that what I will be doing, I will be renaming this thread. So let's rename this thread as even thread and let's rename the second thread as odd thread. Let's print out again. So now here you can see the output is coming in a meaningful way. So here the odd thread is printing 2 followed by the even thread 1, odd thread with 3 and so on. But if you look at the output, this output is actually wrong because the odd thread is not printing the odd number. Similarly, the even thread is also not doing the same thing. So now let's enhance the solution so that we can achieve the final output. And the way we will be doing it is very simple and with the help of a simple logic, you can easily solve this problem. So what we will be doing, we will be taking a simple help of mathematics. So if you know if we module a number by 2, we can easily determine that whether the number is an odd or even. So if the module value of a number by 2 is 0, means the number is even. Similarly, if the module value of a particular number is 1, then the number will be odd. And by taking the advantage of this concept, we will actually solve this problem. So what we will be doing within this printer class, we will be creating another variable called as reminder. And with the help of this reminder variable, we will determine that the number that is being printed whether that number is odd or even and if it is an even then we will be printing that number by the even thread otherwise we will be printing that number by the odd thread. So I hope you got the concept. Let's see how we will implement that concept. So to implement this concept we will be making few changes and the first changes is whenever we are defining the printer object over here we will be passing two number in the constructor class. That is over here we will be passing 0 for the even thread and here we will be passing 1 for the odd thread. Because if you know for an odd number the module by 2 will be odd which is 1 over here. So let's define the similar constructor over here. So within this printer class let's create the constructor called as printer and let's define this value that is reminder over here. So hopefully you guys are clear with this concept. Now let's see with the help of this reminder thing how we will be solving this problem. So what we will be doing within this run class, we will be changing a bit of code. So here before printing the number, we will first check that the value that is coming in the printer, whether that value is even or odd. So let's first implement that. Now comes the important concept and that is if the value of this number is 0, which means that is an even number and then it should only be printed by the even thread. Similarly, if the value of this number is 1, then it is an odd number and it should be printed by only the odd thread. So here I will write a logic to block a particular thread. And to keep a thread on a waiting state, we need to first define an object and that is a locking object. So let's also define an object called as lock. And let's put the lock on this object. And that's it. This is a simple logic that you have to implement it over here to solve this problem. And if you have still not understand how the wait and notify works, I would recommend you to go through my previous video because over there in my previous video with the help of the classical problem and that is the producer and the consumer problem, I have explained the concept in detail that how the wait and notify works in a multi-thread application. Now let's proceed with this solution and after that I will be explaining in detail that how this entire program is actually working. So let me write one more line over here and that is and also what we have to do we have to keep this thing within the synchronized block because this is the critical section of our code and both the thread should not enter the critical section simultaneously. So let's define this string within the synchronized block. And that's it. Let's run this program and let's see the output. So okay, you can see that the odd thread have printed one, but here the loop have run only for once because I think I have done a simple mistake. And that is this lock object should also be a static object because this lock object should be a single instance within your entire code. So let's run it one more time. So here you can see the number one has been printed by the odd thread, number two has been printed by the even thread and so on. So here you can see all the even numbers have been printed by the even thread and all the odd numbers have been printed by the odd thread. 
and this is what we need for this problem. So let's now understand that what we have done within the critical section which made it possible to print the number in this way. So here you can see whenever I am creating an even thread I am defining it with 0 which means that this is an even thread. Similarly over here whenever I am defining an odd thread I am defining with 1. And here first I am checking that whether the module of that particular number is 0 or 1. So if it is 0 means only the even thread should print this number. So here if you do a dry run let's take an example that the value of the counter is 4. So we are checking that whether the module of 4 is 0 or 1. So obviously the module of 4 is 0 which means that the number is even and at that time if the thread that have entered the critical section is an odd thread which means the value defined over here is 1. So we are blocking the odd thread over here. And we will keep on blocking this thread until and unless an even thread enters into the process. So as soon as an even thread enters into the process, for that thread obviously the reminder value will be 0. So 4 module 2 will be 0 which is also equal to the reminder value of that thread. So it will skip this while loop and it will print the number using the printer value. And once the even value have been printed by the even thread, we are notifying the odd thread that is blocked over here that we are done with the printing operation of the event number by the event thread. Now the odd thread should proceed further. So here we are notifying the odd thread over here. And in this way, this process will keep on going through one step at a time. So if you have liked this video, do not forget to like this button and share with your friends. And if you are new to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview. So without wasting much time, let's see you on our next video where we will be discussing another important question from technical interview. So see you on our next video. Thank you.